We have combine numbers, and we have a much better idea of where these guys are going in the NFL draft. So let's give you our top 24 Dynasty Superflex rankings. The one quarterback rankings are live on the site right now as well. And if you play in a one quarterback league, just move the quarterbacks down. Now, starting off at one, we are going to go with Caleb Williams. Nothing changes. I mean, he was already penciled in to be the number one overall draft pick, according to Vegas Sportsbooks. Before the NFL Combine, he's going to be a Chicago Bear. I've talked about this time and time again, but if you're a top three NFL draft pick at quarterback, you have all the job security in the world. Uh, literally the only guy that had not been able to start for multiple seasons and given every chance to fail was Trey Lance. Outside of that, you go back the past 20 seasons, Trubisky, but Blake Bortles, these massive busts are still starting 3-4. They're still starting through their entire rookie contract. So hypothetically, worst case scenario, Caleb Williams is a bust. I don't expect him to be, but he's still going out there starting for three years. Worst case scenario, and he has rushing upside, so it's going to be viable in fantasy. And then obviously he shows anything. Then all of a sudden he's a borderline top five guy in Dynasty. And I think you'd be super excited about the range of outcomes here. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., our next guy. I, I wish I got to see him at the Combine. I, I wish we had the official numbers. But if I'm Marvin, what am I doing out there? I mean, you're penciled in to be the third. You're penciled in to be the fourth pick in this draft. You're going to be a top five pick regardless. So if you're a top five pick regardless, do you really have to go out there, throw on some underwear, and run around for people to watch it? Not really. Like, he has nothing to gain, almost everything to lose if he goes out there and say he trips the 40-yard dash. I, I don't really care that he was not at the NFL Combine. He's probably going to be an Arizona Cardinal, maybe a New England Patriot. He is the best wide receiver prospect we've seen since Jamar Chase. This is someone that was number one in this draft class with his touchdown rate at the very top with his yards per route run, at the very top with his yards per team pass attempt. He's incredibly young, only stayed three years at Ohio State. And keep in mind, I mean, his production's even more impressive considering he was at Ohio State when this is a wide receiver room that always has some top competition. Now, going over to our next two guys, Drake May, Jaden Daniels are quarterbacks that we've gone back and forth, back and forth, back and forth on. I am almost penciling in whoever goes to Washington at two as my quarterback here. My one hesitation that I'm going to have with Daniels is a lot of people coming into the NFL combine said he was too small, that he didn't weigh enough, that he's too skinny, yada, yada, yada. And then he doesn't step on the scale, which I mean, you have Jonathan Brooks coming off torn ACL. He's willing to step on a scale, right? I mean, it's really unheard of a quarterback or any player not willing to just be weighed. So it's interesting here with Jane Daniels. Of course, if an NFL front office, if an NFL um, scouting department's willing to sign off on him, if Washington takes him at two, I'm going to say, okay, he has all the rushing upside in the world. He has the job security, good situation. And we'll move him ahead of Drake May at that point. But until we see it, I, I'm going to be a little bit more conservative. And we're just going to go ahead and throw Drake May here at three, but they're pretty much tied. I'm going over to our next guy. We are going to have Malik Neighbors at five. With Neighbors, youngest wide receiver in this draft class. He was the number one wide receiver with his PFF grade. He's at the very top with his yards per route run. Number one in this class in yards per team pass attempt. I mean, right up there with his targets per route run. I, everything about Malik Neighbors screams bona fide studs. So it's frustrating. We don't get anything at the combine. I, I wish we did, but nothing's changing. He's still a top 10 NFL draft pick locked and loaded. I mean, maybe Rome's pushing him as our next spot here at six. I am still going to have Rome behind neighbors. While Rome didn't really have that phenomenal season until year four, which historically speaking is a pretty big red flag, right? If you don't break out until year four of your NFL career, that is someone that we should be worried about. But like we said in that in-depth video breaking down Rome, this is someone that didn't have a, rush, a regular freshman season just because it was the COVID year. Washington played like four games. He also played alongside two other wide receivers that are going to go top 100 of this year's NFL draft. So if we're looking at the competition, we're looking at the fact that he didn't really have a true freshman season. He's pretty damn close to Marvin Harrison Jr. with his age. I'm going to ignore all that. Man completely hosted the NFL Combine. And he's pretty damn productive this past season among that top competition that you had at Washington. So I still think he's a bona fide stud. What's very interesting is Brock Bowers obviously doesn't uh, blow anybody away at the NFL. It doesn't really matter. I saw Brock Bowers in the mock draft that we did right after the NFL Combine on Saturday night actually fall behind Brian Thomas. Jr. I'm still going to be going Brock Bowers here at seven. I stand by. I think Kyle Pitts was a better prospect. Doesn't really matter. I stand by. Usually I'm not drafting rookie tight ends. Um, thanks Sam Laporta for absolutely crushing me. 
Brock Bowers is a phenomenal prospect. The man dominated targets at Georgia. The man was used as a running back in the red zone of Georgia. I mean, they're just doing everything that they can to get the ball in his hands. So I am still going to have Brock Bowers here at seven. I am not going to be overthinking this. And yeah, the rankings inside the top seven are pretty much remain the exact same for me as they were previously. But from eight on, this is where things change, ladies and gentlemen. Brian Thomas Jr. is a wide receiver that is very difficult to evaluate on paper. The reason for this is he played in an LSU offense that had Malik Neighbors, who would be a wide receiver one in most draft classes if it wasn't just for this one year where Marvin Harrison Jr. exists. So you played alongside the top competition. You also add a quarterback there that's going to go inside the top five picks of the NFL draft. So it's very interesting. And I, I hate to draw this comp. I mean, you can look at so many different teammates. You can look at Odell and Jarvis Landry at LSU. You can look at Hopkins Watkins at Clemson. I mean, you can go and look at, uh, say, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson. You can go look at Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave. There are so many collegiate wide receiver teammates that were a little bit throttled with their production in college just because they played alongside another top-end option. But you have to take that into consideration when you're evaluating these guys. You have to consider the context behind it. Brian Thomas Jr. is penciled in to be a round one NFL draft pick after his combine performance. The man does declare after his true junior season. Looks like he's a complete freak in terms of his athletic profile. So I think Brian Thomas Jr. has to be the eighth person at this point. J.J. McCarthy will be in here at nine. I know a lot of people worried about McCarthy's weight as well. He goes out there. I mean, he weighs in as if it's not a problem at the NFL combine. If you are looking at a lot of NFL mock drafters right now, a lot of people are trying to push him inside the top 10. I'm seeing some buzz that the Atlanta Falcons take him. Obviously, if they trade for fields, it's probably done. But I'm seeing buzz that the Denver Broncos go after him at 12. And if J.J. McCarthy is a top 10 NFL draft pick, regardless of whatever you think about him, not really throwing the ball at Michigan. I know it's frustrating. You don't have a large sample that we can evaluate him from. But he's pretty athletic. He has some rushing upside at the NFL level. By no means is he Jaden Daniels, but maybe he gets 20, 30 rushing yards a game. And at the same time, he'll be on a guaranteed path to be a starting quarterback at the NFL level. With all that being said, though, if J.J. McCarthy falls like Will Levis, if he falls like Malik Willis, because remember, you go back a couple seasons, everybody thought Malik Willis was quarterback one in that draft class. If he ends up falling outside the first round, I will tell you right now, he's falling in these rankings dramatically. But this ranking is under the assumption that he is a mid-round one NFL draft pick. Now, dropping down to our next tier, this is where I don't know what to do. Troy Franklin is a wide receiver that I really liked coming into the NFL combine. You looked at what he was able to do at Oregon on paper and he said, okay, well, this is a wide receiver that was hyper productive. This is a wide receiver that checks pretty much every single box. He broke out early. He declares as a true freshman. I mean, he's pretty much getting mocked to go around one of the NFL draft, pretty good athlete, hyper productive his true junior season. So I mean, on paper, the metrics look great for Troy Franklin. Now, I don't want to make this too big of a deal because I've made a mistake last year where I made it a big deal with Tank Dell. I didn't draft Tank Dell because we had never seen a wide receiver that size actually be a wide receiver one in fantasy or anything close. We had never seen a wide receiver at 165 pounds make a difference. We've never seen a wide receiver one in fantasy that weighed less than 180 pounds at their respective NFL combine. Troy Franklin does not hit 180 pounds, but you are seeing guys that are getting close to being wide receiver ones in fantasy. It hasn't happened yet, but that are under that threshold as of late. Devonta Smith is under 180 pounds. Uh, like we said, Tank Dell is 165. So even though the historical data tells us, yeah, you can't be drafting these players that aren't over 180 and they do have a cap ceiling. I think maybe that historical data is a little bit outdated in this instance, just because of how the wide receiver positions evolving at the NFL level, where it's a little bit more about creating separation rather than going through and winning at the catch point. Now, Xavier worthy will be our next guy in here at 11. Xavier Worthy is going to move up these spot, these rankings just a bit. Now, it's not because the faster you run at the NFL Combine, the more productive you're going to be in fantasy. We've actually seen some evidence saying once you run a little bit too fast that maybe it doesn't work out just because you get penciled in to be a field stretcher at the next level. 
But the reason we are going to move up Xavier Worthy just a bit is his 40-yard dash pretty much pencils him in to be a round one NFL draft pick, at least based off historical evidence on what we've seen. I am worried that he's only 165 pounds. It's something that is a little bit concerning for me. He is undersized like Franklin. He breaks out as a true freshman, though. He declares as a true junior. He checks a lot of boxes. I, I just don't know if we can completely overlook the lack of size. And I think he can be a very good real-life wide receiver while maybe not commanding a ton of volume from a fantasy football perspective. Now, our next guy, Adonai Mitchell, a phenomenal combine, right? I mean, and we actually really needed to see the NFL combine for Adonai because you go to how he was used at the University of Texas, of course, hook him horns. This is a wide receiver that was primarily a deep threat. No involvement at all in the screen game. You look at his average depth of target, you look at his air yards, and he was pretty much a top three wide receiver in a dot in this class. So if he's winning at the NFL level, at least how he was deployed in college is with vertical routes. And you don't want him to be James Washington back from 2018, where James Washington at Oklahoma state wins the Blitnikoff. I mean, just a phenomenal wide receiver, but he wins it with these vertical routes where he's that field stretching option. And then you get to the combine and you're slow. Like you can't be a field stretching option at the NFL level and be slow. Adonai looks great at the combine. You really do like to see it. But he is still pretty much dead last in the class in yards per route run. At the very bottom in targets per route run. At the very bottom in yards per team pass attempts. You played alongside Xavier Worthy. You played alongside Jatavian Sanders. So, I mean, it's somewhat understandable. But I'm going to be a little bit hesitant to give him just the benefit of the doubt. Now, our next guy will be Bo Nix. I mean, with Bo Nix, a lot of this is going to come down to NFL draft capital, right? I mean, Bo Nix goes inside the top 20 picks of the NFL draft. He's probably right up there at 10. He's probably going to move up these rankings just a bit. However, if he falls to round two, he's probably going to be moving behind some of these guys that are immediately after him. So it is very difficult to go through and rank someone like Bo Nix. Like I said, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm some expert quarterback scout. Never have, never will. I don't think you should trust anybody who's trying to pretend to be an expert NFL scout that you're watching at quarterback in particular because there are so many moving variables. It's so hard to try to project that out. So I do want to see the NFL draft capital, which will give us an idea of his job security at the next level. And of course, if you're playing in a one quarterback dynasty format, I mean, you're just never considering the quarterbacks at this point. I mean, unless you're looking at Caleb Daniels or May, then of course you can take them late round one. And like I said, we have our one quarterback rankings on the site already. If you are interested in that. And if you're not already a member of the flock on the side, I don't know what you're waiting for. Flogfantasy.com is where all our Dynasty Fantasy Football rankings are. That's where you can find our Dynasty Trade Calculator, our Dynasty Trade Finder, all our premium content, and a ton of Dynasty Rookie Draft Guides over there from pretty much all your favorite creators that you watch on YouTube. And yeah, if you're not already a member of the site, it's not too late to sign up. Promo code FLOCK would get you 30% off any subscription. And also if you use code FLOCK, yours truly will break down your Dynasty Fantasy Football team in a podcast. But going over to our next guy in this year, we are going to have Lad McConkey. Now, I understand a lot of people love Lad, and I completely understand why. My hesitation, he ran 140 routes right last year, right? He's an older guy coming out of Georgia. He wasn't productive early on in his collegiate career, so the production profile isn't necessarily there. He had a good NFL combine, which is nice to see for sure. I'm just a little hesitant to go through and rank him up there as like the wide receiver five when he ran 140 routes last season. From a per route run perspective, he was great, but I would like to just be a little bit cautious with the small sample. But like I said, the reason we are making this as a tier list is if you wanted to rank Ladd over Troy Franklin, if you wanted to go out there and you wanted to rank him over Xavier Worthy, over Adonai Mitchell, you do you. I think you can rank him ahead of everybody else in this tier. And that's why this is a tier list. All I would ask is please don't be ranking him over Ryan Thomas. For the love of God, do not have him close to Rome. Now, dropping down to our next tier, I'm going to be going with Trey Benson as well as Jonathan Brooks. I think both these running backs can move up a ton. I'm going to be a little bit more hesitant with the running backs as it stands right now, just given the fact that running backs going to be dictated a little bit more off of opportunity and opportunity is a lot of times going to be found from NFL draft capital. Whereas wide receiver, I don't necessarily think you have to worry as much about opportunity and talent will win out a lot of the time. 
So if we get to the NFL draft and Trey Benson is a second round pick, Jonathan Brooks is a second round pick. They will not only jump like Ladd, Bo Nix, Adam Ivey, they could go all the way to the very top of this tier. So Trey Benson, Jonathan Brooks, they're exciting. I do want to see landing spot. I do want to see draft capital. I think it matters a little bit more for running back than it does wide receiver, which is why you're going to be a little hesitant. But Trey Benson absolutely crushed the NFL combine. Looks like he checks almost every single box. I think Jonathan Brooks is by far and away the best running back in the class when healthy. It is just difficult to go out there and put him as RB1 coming off a torn ACL when we don't necessarily know if you're going to get early season action and you may have a better shot of going through and buying low on him where Trey Benson may run away from you early on. But going over to what we have with our next tier, we're going to be looking at Michael Penix as well as Keon Coleman. Now, I know we talked about Keon Coleman in the losers video where this is someone that goes out there and is sold to be some top end athlete that turns out to not exactly be true. He runs a 461 40 yard dash. I, I see everybody screaming in the comment section, but the GPS, the GPS, the, don't be overreacting to the GPS, right? If you're comparing 40 yard dash times 40 yard dash times across the board, we can look at all the historical data. We can look at exactly what it means and we're comparing apples to apples. Okay. I understand 10 yard split looks good, but like we discussed in an in-depth video last week, breaking down what matters at the NFL combine, the 40 yard dash overall was a lot more predictive of finding upside than what you had with the 10 yard split. Now the 40 yard dash is not everything. It's a, a tiny piece of the puzzle. We're just primarily talking about it because it just happened. And we've been talking about his production profile all off season and all off season. The issue was, Okay, he's kind of at the bottom of this class. If you were looking at his yards per route run, if you're looking at pretty much any advanced metric, like the production profile is very bad with Keon Coleman. Now he did compete alongside Johnny Wilson. He's also a younger player overall. So we kind of wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt when everybody was also coming out screaming, well, he's a top end athlete. It's going to crush the NFL combine. I know he, he jumped. His RAS score is actually pretty damn good, but... I, he's not undraftable for me, but I do think we have to give him a slight hit because I didn't really like him before the combine either. Now going over to our next tier, we're going to be going with Jatavion Sanders next. I think with Sanders, if it's a non tight end premium format, you can maybe move him down here just a bit. But like we said, it's a tight end premium format. The production profile actually looks a little more impressive. Now that we see how Xavier worthy and Adonai Mitchell test. Because if both Xavier Worthy and Adonai Mitchell end up being round one NFL draft picks, then we can say, okay, well, take the production that Tavion Sanders had and, con and add in the context that he played alongside two round one NFL wide receivers. And if you do that, he looks even more impressive. Now, going over to what we have with the other guys in the tier, we're going to go Blake Corum here. And now I understand with Blake, a, a smaller running back, not a great athlete, but a lot better than people were expecting at the combine, or at least somewhat better than people were expecting. At least I was expecting. And pretty much you're just drafting him, hoping that he goes over to the Los Angeles Chargers. And we're going to go Braylon Allen as well. We don't really get to see the testing numbers with Allen, but this is a running back that looks like a straight up monster. The question is more so about the agility. I know a lot of people are very excited about him. And he's the guy that all, all the hype right now. But I, don't know. I, I hope we get to see what happens at his pro day. Now, dropping down to our last year, I don't want to talk about these guys too, too much. We are probably going to give them their dedicated videos later this offseason. We'll be diving in much deeper. But we'll have Xavier Leggett, Malachi Corley, Roman Wilson, Johnny Wilson, and Devontez Walker. I essentially just want to throw them all in this tier and put a massive asterisk and let people know that late in rookie drafts, it is a wide receiver paradise. This is an extremely deep class where you're looking at the wide receiver 10 in this class about equivalent to like the wide receiver six in an average wide receiver class. So I think you'd be very excited. And if you're in round two, it's hard to go wrong just going ahead and taking one of these guys. I mean, whoever your favorite is. But I think that's all I have for you. Again, thank you so much for being a member of the flock. And of course, if you want access to my one quarterback rankings, if you want access to our top 36, 
if you want our dynasty startup, if you want any of our dynasty rankings, any of the dynasty rankings of anybody you watch on YouTube, all the premium content, our dynasty trade calculator, our dynasty trade finder, I mean, the whole nine yards, all on flockfantasy.com. Code flock, you're going to get 30% off in a subscription. If you use code flock, yours truly will break down your dynasty fantasy football team in a podcast as well. So make sure you take advantage of that, ladies and gentlemen. But I think that's all I have for you. Really do appreciate you. Really hope you have a great day and really hope we get to see you out in a live stream sometime soon.